on this episode of The Breakthrough Show. We're celebrating Pride Month by welcoming back to the show one of our favorite musical artists, Kevin Kiley. In addition to Kevin performing for us, he shares a little about his own journey as part of the LGBTQ plus community, and we discuss how we could all stand to communicate even better. Then we'll meet coming out coach Annie M. Henderson. In our conversation, Annie vulnerably shares her story of coming out later in life and all the breakthroughs she has had in her journey since that time. We talk about everything from her story to religious trauma to expectations that lead to fear, as well as the incredible work she's doing today to be a loving support to not just those in the LGBTQ plus community, but allies as well. You don't want to miss this important episode coming up today. Life gives us moments when we have the opportunity to make a choice. And what we choose has the potential to change our lives forever. Join us now for another inspired episode of The Breakthrough. And now, please welcome the creator and host of the show, Jessica Dugas. Welcome back to The Breakthrough Show. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas, and we welcome you to another episode that encourages you to change the way you look at and live your life through inspirational stories and, of course, entertainment. And I'm so excited that your favorite uh, musician, singer, songwriter, and my favorite is back today um, to share some music and stories with us. But I'm really excited to share about the fact that this is the end of Pride Month when this is airing. And um, Pride is a month where we honor the diversity in people and um, it's it's something that I continue to learn more about as time goes on. And as some people that are close to me are part of the LGBTQIA plus community. And um, I, I continue to be blown away by the information that's out there for us now and the amount of support that we've seen continue to grow throughout the years for for Pride Month. And I'm really excited that later on, on today's episode, we're going to be talking to Annie Henderson, who is a life coach. She is a uh, counselor and EFT practitioner, and she is a coming out coach for LGBTQIA plus families struggling with their child coming out and those who need guidance along the way. Um, and so we're going to get to talk to her later on as well. And I am really excited to first, however, welcome back to the show, my friend and yours, Kevin Kiley. Welcome back, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> It's good to have you here again, as always, not just, uh, you know, a recurring guest on the Breakthrough Show, but one half of the uh, Throwback Thursday show. Right? Here we are. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, when I when I knew that I was going to have Annie on today's episode, um, I really wanted to stay with the pride theme. And um, the one thing that I really love about your music is that I relate to, as a straight woman, I relate to your songs and your lyrics as much as you do. And, um, and, and it's really cool the way music brings people together like that, right? Yeah. Absolutely. That's why I started writing it for everybody. That's why yeah. when I do my um <laughs> my music and stuff and my music videos, I don't ever really tell my story in it because I want everybody to be able to relate to it in whatever way it resonates with them. So definitely. Yeah. So you and I talked a little bit before we came on today um, about a little bit of your journey. And I think that when we talk about people coming out um, about their sexuality, that they they kind of imagine it being this like parade and or, you know, a formal letter with a graphic and all of this <laughs> stuff, you know, like that it has to be this big performance, so to speak, when they come out. So and I know that your experience was a little bit different than that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So yeah, exactly. It. People live feel like they have to live up to some standard as, you know, I have to put this big post on Facebook or I have to put this big video <laughs> or I have to do this big thing. 
No, I literally just woke up one day and I'm like, I'm just going to be me and I'm going to be happy being me. And, you know, people that don't accept that in my life are not meant to be in my life. And those people that are like my family, my friends, loved ones, lovers, all that good stuff will. And that's really what I go by and everything. It's like you have to be happy and be your authentic self no matter what anybody says. Because there's always, in anything in life, there's always going to be somebody that tries to steer you off your path. There's always going to be somebody that makes you feel bad for being who you are. And those people are just not meant to be in your life. And you know you're on to bigger and better things. And that's mm -hmm. really starts from in, inside what makes you happy and, and, you know, accepting every part of yourself no matter what. Yeah. Do you, has it ever been difficult? Have you ever had those moments or interactions with people where you, you, you say to yourself, why can't they just accept me for me? Definitely, definitely, especially in the beginning. It's like, and it, it's, you know, you don't really even know, like, in your mind, like, you're still trying to figure out yourself. And, like, I'm, I don't necessarily, you know, label myself or make myself feel like, you know, I'm stuck to one thing. Like, you know, I'm happy with who I am and, and who I like and who I love is, is that. And, and that's just it. And, you know, people don't see it like that, which is kind of sad and kind of upsetting because I think that there's so much more to, to life, I mean, and to love than just you know, what somebody looks like or what gender they are or, you know, what their hair color looks like or how big or skinny they are. Like, there's so much more to it than that. And that's just kind of what um, I have a hard time with because there's mm -hmm. not many people that understand that and or like that. But there is a lot like you, which is why we click so much. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, it has been definitely hard before. Yeah, I, I imagine so because you, I, I can imagine that you, are just being who you are and when when who you are isn't quote unquote good enough for someone um it can be it can be heartbreaking you know um and i think that on some sides of things we need to be very careful with immediately labeling people as homophobic when they might just not understand they right. might not you know, and, and being, so being more open to each other's journey and where we are, I'm very confident in saying that I don't, I, I don't think that I was always an ally. I think years ago, I didn't know I was trying to understand. I had been raised in a very, um, you know, when you're raised in the church, you're raised to believe certain things. And, um, and I think there was a lot of me that was just doing what I thought was, you know, right for me to do, because that's what I was taught, even though in my heart, there were still places where I felt like something's not quite right here, <laughs> you know? Right. And so as time has gone on, I, I was never um, scared of the LGBTQ community. I was never, um, you know, feeling like I needed to speak out against them or anything like that. But I was never what I would consider to be an ally because I wasn't, I wasn't opening myself up to have the conversations or to, um, to do anything, to take action, to meet more people, to try to discover what, what does this actually mean? What does it look like? What is this community all about? And, um, and I think that now I can, I can firmly say I'm kind of like I, I would be like an ally in training. I'm an, yeah. <laughs> I'm an ally, but still, I think I think we all need to continue to learn and be understanding and have conversations. Do you ever have anybody that that asks you questions? Sometimes, but not not as much. And that, that yeah, that literally goes back to kind of what I was just saying. Like it, that's it. It really could just start from something so simple like that. Like you know, instead of you know being so quick to judge somebody, ask, educate yourself, um, and you might even come out with a whole different outlook at, than what you originally thought. It's not necessarily. It goes both ways too. It's not necessarily that um, you know people you know are not. Um, understanding on our side either because we also have to be patient and understanding too. It works both ways. It's not just a one-sided thing, mm -hmm. but you know, it starts from, from something so small like that can make such a difference. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things, as I mentioned, that I love about you is that your music reaches everybody, no matter who you love. And um, listen, I'll tell you a funny story really quick before you sing for us today. I, uh, my husband was driving and he's like, put on some music and his um, phone is connected to the, the 
stereo in the car. And I went to his Spotify and under liked songs, the third song there was ghosted by Kevin Kiley. <laughs> and so my husband, my husband has you on his Spotify. I was like, look at that. I'm telling Kevin Kiley. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> you made it. That's it. You don't need even the Billboard Top 100 now. You made nope. Phillips. I got Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> right between Dra Drake and Little Wayne. As I should be. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are going to sing for us today, Kevin. And the first song you're going to do is If I Can't Love Her. Now, obviously, from the title, we're going, okay, Kevin, how on earth do you relate to this song? But what does this song mean to you? Oh, it means so much to me. So I got, this was one of my dream roles forever. And I actually got to play him. This is from Beauty and the Beast, for those who don't know. I played him when I was a senior in high school. And I'm really hopeful to um, to play him again um, in the near future or whenever. But um, this song means a lot to me. And it just the journey that the song, song tells, like, you know, and that kind of goes kind of hand in hand to what we were just talking about. Like, people look at him, the Beast in the show, and they think that that's all he is and he doesn't have anything that goes on inside of him but you know then this girl bell comes along and she understands and she looks at him differently and you know he changes his point of view and it, it's so different but it, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with what he's talking about in a sense and then in this song he's kind of at a crossroad you know he has that journey in the beginning where he's very sad and he's angry with himself and then he's he builds to that power because you know, something that he never thought he can do, he did. He loved right. and he got somebody to love him back. So yeah, that song means a lot to me in the journey that, you know, you have with yourself. Yes, absolutely. Well, I love it, you guys. So here to perform, If I Can't Love Her is Kevin Kiley. <laughs> Love her and make her love. 
Stop it, Kevin Kylie. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. So Thank beautiful. You. you deserve 12 gallons of water after. <laughs> that one always brings a little tear to my eye. I love it. I love it. All right. The yes. journey of that song. Yes, a hundred percent. And it's it's you know, it's it's not hard to listen to a song and take what the meaning you need from it to be. Um, and the same thing with stories, the same thing with movies, the same thing with uh, books, anything. You know, we don't have to go into all of this stuff with such judgment and say, well, this was written by a person that was gay or this is written by a person that was straight or whatever it is, yep. take what you need from it apply it to your life, take it to your heart the way you need it. And then, you know, just take it or leave it. You know, it's that exactly. easy. And, and you know, I talk to you about this all the time, but I, that's the same thing that I, I preach and I do with my music. Like when I do my music videos or when people ask me in interviews, you know, I do, I don't base the music video off of my story that I necessarily wrote it about. I, I base it off of, you know, just a general thing. So that way anybody that, really um takes what resonates with them and they you know you might listen to goodbye for now or ghosted and you might relate to it from a totally different form that you might have right. went through than what i wrote it about and that's what i want people to be able to do to, re to relate to in their own way yeah yeah absolutely well we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna come back and talk to annie henderson and then more with kevin kiley at the end of the show so stay tuned you guys we'll be right back in just a minute hi my name is brandon and over the past year, the Deloitte Cafe team and I have traveled across the U.S. researching this rapidly growing industry of CBD products. What we have found throughout the industry were products that were inconsistent in dosage and used ingredients that weren't even lab tested. Products with chalky textures, bitter aftertaste, and worst of all, confusion among the CBD consumers. That's why we created Deloitte Cafe. A 15 milligram lab tested, all natural, water soluble, Hemp CBD powder pack. It's odorless, colorless, and tasteless. Add it to your favorite drink of choice wherever, whenever, on the go. Quickly find your calm, your balance, and your delight when you need it most. Welcome back to the Breakthrough Show. You know, I feel like every generation says times are changing. And I think we're, we, we look back on how things were growing up. And a lot of times it's hard for us to embrace new things, embrace the way things are. And one of the things that I think can really help us with that is when we have coaches and support systems of people that can help us navigate the newness that comes into our lives. My special guest today is a life coach. She's a counselor. She's an EFT. I mean, listen, are we surprised that we have somebody? <laughs> else multi-passionate on here? No, we're not. Um, but one part of her work that I really love is that she works with LGBTQ plus families, guiding them on their journeys of support and understanding. And I just think that that is uh, just an amazing thing to do for, for society today. And so I really want to welcome Annie Henderson to the show. Welcome, Annie. Thank you so much for having me, Jessica. I'm excited to be here. Yes, I'm so excited. We we talked a little bit ago, not too long ago. Sometimes there's such a huge delay between when I talked <laughs> and I'm like, who is this? I have no idea. <laughs> I I as I said in your in the in little intro, I'm so uh, moved by the work that you're doing because, like I said, some of us grew up in a place where or in a mindset where, in a community where um, LGBTQ was not, I mean, even all those letters was not a thing when we were growing not up. Not at all. 
<laughs> and, <laughs> and so we're, I think, I think even, even those of us that are comfortable with having those conversations, it's, it's still a new space to be in of having these conversations. And there's a lot of families though, that I I've seen that are um, struggling with that when their child comes to them and says, this is what I am, and they don't know what to do with that. And so I really commend you for the work that you're doing in this area. Tell us a little bit how um, your life has been and how you even got into this space. Oh, okay. Loaded yeah, question. thank you. It is, it is. Well, it started early on. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I also work with people pleasers and that was definitely part of my journey of just shoving down the real Annie, yeah. <laughs> even if it was subconsciously, right. From all the information we see, receive growing up and, um, we learn what's accepted, whether it's mm-hmm. through our church or with our family, or, you know, if we're having to watch a show with our family and maybe the mom, mom or dad makes a comment about if there's a display of affection between a gay or lesbian couple, right? That seeks in. So even if it's not like, oh, I'm gay and I can't be, it's just like, it's not even an option. Like (laughs) I'll never go there. So I never really got to that place, which is interesting because when I uh, talked to my partner, she knew at like the age of five, Mm. (laughs) she said she like came out of the womb that way. (laughs) And so she's like, how did you not know? So it's, <clears throat> for people that are not in the um, alphabet mafia, <laughs> if they're not part of the LGBTQIA, that's um, they might think there's one way, right? right? And like you were saying, when we were younger, there was gay and lesbian, and that's about it. Yeah, pretty much. And now there's just the vocabulary. Like I'm still learning, <laughs> even though I'm on the inside, I'm still learning from all the the youth that are coming through and just have you know, just a better way to describe. It's not like they're inventing anything new. It's just that we didn't have these other terms to describe ourselves. Uh, so I grew up and just as a people pleaser, I just said yes right. to everyone. Do you want to so date many me? Let's know about that. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I went down a path that, I mean, if I imagine if I wasn't a people pleaser, what my life would have looked like. And of mm. course, I'm glad it went the way it did because I have my daughter and she's amazing and I wouldn't be in this spot and doing what I do if it wasn't for that journey. But um, I ended up getting married at 19 because he asked (laughs) and it wasn't, wasn't going to be me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think there's a lot of us. Yeah. Um, And I, uh, and you know what? I, I can get along with anybody. Mm -hmm. I was married for seven years and, um, we were great pals. (laughs) We were were wonderful friends. And since I was, (laughs) since I was so young and I didn't have experience before, I just thought that was normal. Mm -hmm. And in talking to, um, I guess other unhappy housewives, that was par for course. Like, yeah, sex isn't that great. (laughs) It's not, it's not, you know, you're not going to have the best. It's just, that's, what living with a man is like. <laughs> and isn't that sad that that's the conversation though? Like the, that's a yeah. huge, I remember, you know, even now, like I'll talk to people and they're, they're just, I, I can't, we, my husband and I just had our 10 year anniversary and Congratulations. people were like, thank you. And people were like, oh, well, you know, the good times have passed. And I'm thinking to myself, what, <laughs> what? is this what we tell people? Are we trying yeah. to scare everybody? <laughs> Going on. Exactly. Yeah. It's so sad. And was so I, which just confused me even more. I was like, okay, nothing's wrong with me. This is just, this is how it is for everyone. Luckily I've met many people in wonderful relationships <laughs> now that I'm like, okay, yeah. that's just someone else. Um, yeah. So I had my daughter when I was 26, I got divorced when I was 27. Um, and I, I remember having that thought because I grew up with a lot of parents and still parents do this where they stay together for the kids. And mm-hmm. I was like, I could, I could do that. I was like, but will I still be like happy enough, like this far into the future? And I was like, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. What do I, and I, and I really had to ask myself, what do I want to teach my daughter? Is it to people please? And just 
do something because everyone thinks you should or put your life on the back burner because you think and hope it's the best thing for the kid. And a lot of times it's hope, right? It's not a guarantee that if you stay together for the kids, instead they just get to witness a, maybe an unhealthy relationship. Yeah. So then I, I get, got a divorce and I came out and I thought that would magically be the cure for everything, yeah. but I was still a people pleaser. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, you know, if you keep making the same decisions with the same thought processes, then you're going to get the same results. So I, yes, I was happier in one sense, but I got into a toxic relationship mm. and in a lot of ways it was much worse than, yeah. than my marriage. Uh, but again, learned so much about myself, learned more about boundaries and, um, really had to do the work. And what was interesting is, uh, I was a, I was a counselor. I had, mm. you know, I had three master's degrees. I was doing all the things I was working on myself. Well, I wasn't working on myself. I was consuming, yeah. right? So many of us just consume, consume. We check the box. I got the degrees. This means I should know something about psychology <laughs> and no, no, I, I consumed it so I could use it with others. Right. And it wasn't until I got oddly into, um, entrepreneurship and it's, and it's funny how much mindset is in entrepreneurship mm. as opposed to when I was doing all the other things. Right. Uh, it's almost like it should be definitely a class in like every year of, of school yeah. or, or, um, and, and with parenting, mm -hmm. um, cause it makes such a big difference. So once I did that, then, you know, I, went into relationships differently. I, I met my soulmate and uh, we just celebrated nine years. Um, yeah. And like you said, it's the easiest thing. And of course, those past relationships provided that contrast right. of, I so appreciate this relationship. Right. Not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And like you said, it can be what we want it to be. If we imagine it to be something horrible and miserable, then it can be. Right. And if we want it to be the best, I say the same thing with my teenager. People are like, oh, teenagers. Yeah. And I'm like, it's been great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving it so far. Like there it's, are it's, moments it's fine. But for overall, I think, you know, yeah, you know, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, um, I've been coaching. I shifted from uh, counseling to coaching. And then with coaching, I just started that um, early 2019. And then just this year, 2020, uh, with all the craziness, <laughs> since, the, <laughs> since the pride parades were shut down, I uh, had a podcast that was called uh, The Happy Mama Village. Mm. And my co-host interviewed me about a little bit about my coming out story. And when we did that, then we had some people listen and then, you know, message me around the corner, around the back door and be like, oh, like, I, like, I wish I knew this about you sooner. Cause there was someone that like I worked with mm -hmm. reached out to me cause it was her son that came out. And then someone else reached out and it was her daughter. And we went on to have like a coaching relationship and she was, um, you know, worried and stressed and had mm -hmm. kind of struggled with it for about two years. And then of course she got to the place where, okay, now we need to have a conversation with my parents. So like the grandparents. So there's almost a coming up out for different people in the family, if you think right. about it. Right. I, I um, feel like some people that I've seen feel like, you know, they're going to make this announcement and then that's going to be one and done. It. Wouldn't that be magical? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah not at all. Um, so then I, I started a podcast recently called coming out loved and supported and started a incredible Facebook group with my pastor. So I live in a small town and, uh, you, in you what know, state, in what, tell the people what state you live. <laughs> I live in a small town in Texas. Yeah, see, see, anything is possible. <laughs> yeah, yes. And I have, gosh, and, and my, my partner's from, uh, Mississippi. Oh, well, so, yes, yes. I did a TikTok recently where I was like, where are all my Bible belt gays <laughs> come yes, out? I come saw that one. I saw did you? That. 
It was fun. It was like people are tons of Mississippi and Tennessee and just everywhere really. But um, it's nice to know that you're not alone yeah. because in these States, you don't go walking down the street <laughs> holding the hand. Um, it's just very different. So uh, we, o- we opened up a Facebook group for LGBT and allies. So not only would that uh, would LGBTQIA have a safe place to come and be supported, um, they would also have a chance to maybe heal some of that religious trauma because yeah, so many huge. people have heard you're going to hell and they maybe their family's broken apart, uh, maybe they're disowned. And to be able to come in there and then have a lot of affirming pastors in there right. that can show them um, just a different thought process. And, you know, we've had parents come in and be able to shift how they think about their kids and be able to accept it because they had never heard that that was okay before. So that just makes my day knowing that we can save families and relationships and, um, and individuals too. Yeah. That whole aspect of religious trauma is, is huge. And, um, I think that if even, even because, and we had this conversation when we first met too, I grew up in the Catholic church and I believe you said that you, you same, you, yeah. <laughs> and, um, it's just not a thing you talk about. And, um, so even before, even as I, not even before, even as I was forming my own thoughts, opinions, beliefs about the, the whole thing, um, I, I would see like, I think there was an article that had come out about one of the pride parades and that there were moms that were there that were hugging people that maybe their families didn't. And I just thought like, how could, how could that be bad? How could that be bad right. to, to just love somebody anyway? Like mm-hmm. regardless of what you think, believe, what your own personal experience has been, what you've been taught, like to just love somebody. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing anyway? So just simplify it. It doesn't have to be complicated. Just love. Yeah point is that it's easy for me not being a part of that community to look in and say, wow, things have really come a long way, you know, but you being a part of that community, what do you see as the work that still needs to be done? Yeah. And, and that's a great point because, you know, in my, my little bubble, things are growing great for me, Mm. but I talk to so many people and it's, especially in the South, especially in the deep South where, um, families are being split apart. And the, the worst thing is, is that it's usually driven by church and theology, which just seems so backwards to me. Um, so I always tell, um, allies that, you know, if there's something that you are wanting to do for the LGBTQIA community, the best thing to do, (laughs) um, maybe not the most comfortable, Mm -hmm. but the, the thing that I feel like would have the biggest impact would just to be, um, a little more vocal and like sharing your opinions, whether it's just on Facebook and sharing, maybe it's sharing a post or adding, you know, your two cents and just saying, you know, just for all of my people, I support you and I love you. And if you ever need someone to talk to, because if I hadn't done that podcast, there would be some parents that just felt like they had no one to talk to. Mm. Right. So even though that we might assume everyone knows we're an ally or everyone knows that we're gay, um, a lot of times people don't know. And that might be safe for some people, right? some people might be in a situation where that's not physically or emotionally safe. If you're, you know, privileged, I'll say, (laughs) I feel like I'm privileged with who I'm around. I'm privileged in that I am not going to get fired from my Mm -hmm. job because I work for myself. Um, I have safe family members that I can do that. And, you know, it's not going to have any ill effect on me. Um, But I know there's some people that that might that might be damaging for some people though. It might just be, Oh, like that would be a little uncomfortable. Right. And what I say there is what's more important for you to be comfortable or for you to possibly save lives. 
and families because it can really make that much of a difference for someone who's maybe feels all alone and have no one to talk to and feeling not loved. And then they see your post come across that could make all the difference in the world. And I would say that's totally worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have a million and one <laughs> thoughts and feelings and questions and all the things right now. Um, I think that what you brought up about, you know, people just needing someone to talk to is really important too, because no matter, and I hesitate saying side, but no matter what your beliefs are, I think, I think there's this maybe misconception that, well, they've got to have somebody that supports them in that or, or listens to them or talk to. And I just don't think that, I think if we have more of these conversations, then you know, you're not, you're never going to change somebody's beliefs, period, end of story. Right. Um, but you maybe can, you, can, you, <laughs> maybe. Can have a, you can have a dialogue though. And, and, yeah. you know, um, be present an idea that will then maybe in the future, they will change their belief later on, you know, and, and that little yes. conversation. Yes. Plant the seed. So, yeah. So, you know, going on your Facebook might not necessarily be just for that person that, you know, is, is gay, but it might be so that those people around you also know. So I, I used to be a, a school counselor mm -hmm. and I would teach the kids a lesson on being an upstander or being a bystander and how, you know, if you're around someone and they're picking on others, if you speak up and, or if you decide to say nothing, right? The victim is going to assume that you're on the perpetrator side. And then this same, the bully is also going to think, oh, they're on my side. They're not stopping me. Mm -hmm. They're not saying anything. Whereas, you know, as a bystander, we have all of these thoughts and assumptions. So, you know, being an upstander, and that can look a million different ways. Mm -hmm. It can be as simple as adding a post so people know where you stand. Like you said, it might not change everything in an instant, but it might say, oh, I'm not alone. Or if someone was kind of on the fence and thinking, oh, well, my whole church group or all my family thinks this way, I have to side with them. Right. Oh, there's someone else. Oh, I can, I can talk to them. I can, maybe it's okay for me to love my kid. I think one of the things that I have heard before is that there may be some old beliefs that are leading to a conversation that is also in that book behind you about expectations. <laughs> um, this uh, one? <laughs> uh, that because, you know, we might have certain, I know that I've heard this from other parents before, we might have certain dreams for our kids that we have yeah. envisioned. Mm -hmm. um, and when it doesn't look like that, <laughs> we, we think that there's no other way. I mean, things are just completely different now. Obviously, you know, I think years ago, people might think, well, they're never going to be able to have kids then. And then they won't be able to <laughs> yes. whatever. Like the family. We're kind of a little bit beyond that at this we point. Are. We there are. are. But there are people that still feel that with it, mm -hmm. that have these old, um, beliefs in their heads that, that things can't be a certain way. And, um, and they have these expectations and when they don't look like that, they get disappointed and they think, well, things can't ever be, you know, they generalize very big. And so that's the, that's the only other thing I think I've seen outside of religion that, that make people, people say, well, I, I just can't, I can't see it that way. Right. And that's, yeah. And that's, that's kind of true for everyone. Everyone has these fears that hold them back from what they want to do and what they want to be and how they want to react. But yeah, don't, don't take things yeah. personally. <laughs> All the good ones. I was trying not to bring it up, <laughs> uh, but that, that book, if you choose to read it is, can be good. <laughs> we just have it as a side note for today. Listen, guys, day there will be probably season 10 
there will be an episode about <laughs> that book <laughs> that will, cause that's how many years it's going to take me to get to that point. Um, but <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, Annie, I want to focus for just a few minutes on the work that you're doing now, because I, if, if, if nothing else from this episode, I want people to know where they can find you and where they can find support, because I think that's the most important thing. Yes. Yes. So let's see. The easiest way to find me is just my website. And from there you can find the podcast. You can find the Facebook group. You can get in touch with me for coaching. Um, it's Annie M Henderson.com. Don't forget the M for Marie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah. And then TikTok is just a fun place. And I, again, it's just Annie M Henderson. So wherever you are, come and join us. And like I said, that Facebook group is for LGBTQIA and allies. So if you have some questions, if you're just wanting to become a better ally and have some of these conversations, um, I did want to mention this with my, my church, they put on something called community conversations. Um, the first one was on faith and racism. And then the next one was on faith and human sexuality. Mm. And there was a panel of, uh, amazing people. There were past, there are several pastors and there were also, um, a couple, um, college professors mm. and they answered questions. They really, you know, went through, went through all the letters and try to explain. So there's a lot of education mm -hmm. and also like, what is, what does that mean in terms of the Bible hearing it from a pastor? So it's so good. That's there and in the unit. So come and join us. It's the safest, sweetest little group. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, if it's, if it's not right for you, um, if you're not an affirming ally, I guess that's cool. Um, but feel free to share it with others because I think it's um, such such a meaningful place for the people that are in it. Absolutely. And we will make sure to have all of that information for you guys in the show notes. So it's literally a, cl a click away to find Annie and find a supportive community. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And thank you for helping me as, as a straight woman, be, be a better ally and, and learn and grow. And I think that's all we can really ask of anybody is to continue the journey forward. So thank you so much, Annie. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me on and let me, letting me talk to your wonderful audience. Absolutely. All right, guys, we'll be back in just a minute for more of the breakthrough show. Breakthroughs are about more than you might think. They're about discovering who you are, digging deep, reaching to the core of your soul. They're about healing, healing yourself, understanding your beliefs, creating a ripple effect. And it's not just those initial moments that matter. It's about using them to bring more joy into our own lives and the lives of others. It's about having fun, letting loose, enjoying every moment life has to offer. It's about finding a safe space. It's about creating connection. Join us each and every month for exclusive programming where we invite you to go beyond the breakthrough. So we ask you, are you ready? We'll see you online at thebreakthroughshow.com.
Welcome back to the Breakthrough Show. I want to give a big thank you to my special guest today, Annie Henderson. Make sure you guys check out thebreakthroughshow.com for all the information for everyone that has ever graced the screen on this show. Um, all their information is there for you guys. Everything is just a click away, so be sure to check that out. We're back now with my favorite singer and yours, Kevin Kylie. <laughs> Uh, it's so good to have you here again because I don't see you enough, right? We had to, we, we have to, we keep doing this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I love it. And it feels like, honestly, that it was just yesterday, yet at the same time, it feels like it was 10 years ago that I saw you singing in quarantine karaoke on Facebook. And I was like, I have to talk to him. Yes. And um, <laughs> one of the first songs that you sang on um, the Breakthrough Show was Goodbye for Now. And um, it's actually the one year anniversary of that. Yes, it is. It's so special. <laughs> it's so exciting. What um, so I went through a really hard time. Um, and, you know, music is my therapy. And I was, you know, going through a really tough situation and um you know I, I literally did the song with my producer we probably wrote it and mastered it in like two hours like which is like mm. cool in the studio and recorded and it was good to go the song is just really special to me and i think that um you know like i said a little bit earlier people can relate to what it means to them but you know like i said it doesn't necessarily have to be the death of a relationship or the goodbye of that could be anything you know and it could be even something so simple as saying goodbye to um something that maybe negative happened in your life and, and you know putting that behind you and letting in all the good um and once you do that it's like you know the doors open so much possibility and i just you know this song is really special to me it's my second one that i ever released <laughs> <laughs> I, and so it, it's always nice to i think there's always a special place in my heart for the second time i do things because it's like that first one was just practice <laughs> yeah, <you're right. laughs> we were just trying to figure it out like i'm always telling people as much as i love every single guest that was on season one of this show um yeah uh i was a different person then i <laughs> i i highly recommend later on in this season but um I'm really excited for you to reprise that song for us now. So everybody here is Kevin Kylie singing his single Goodbye for Now. What's going through your head? The next minute something's wrong to know where the moment went. Hell, I've been struggling long. Do you even get it? Tell me, did you ever care or will you just forget me? I've been hurt before, but not like when you left me. Tell me, were you ever there or were you just pretending? As much as it hurts me, I can force you to be something I won't feel now. I'll never forget you, but you let me slip away. It's breaking my heart to say goodbye for now. And it's like getting up and down The cycle just keeps on spinning And one day you want me around I guess the next isn't given And it's just so cruel To leave someone who cares about you You're telling me my words aren't getting through now I'm alone in your fool. As much as it hurts me, I can force you to be something your heart won't feel now. I'll never forget you, but you let me slip away, breaking my heart to say goodbye for now. now, now. Oh. 
going round and round, tell your life's been heavy. But your love to change the subject, you just call me crazy. It's all out of my mind, it's cause I gave you my time. I wish I knew it all along, before I wasted my life. As it hurts me, I can't force you to be something your heart won't feel. No, I'll never forget you, but you let me slip away, breaking my heart. Say, as much as it hurts me, I can't force you to be something your heart won't feel. No, I'll never forget you. Listen, I don't care about anybody else. I was having my own concert back here. <laughs> <laughs> I, If I had my lighter here, it, there would have been a lighter <laughs> and there was singing and there was all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even know. And listen, th sometimes I think I need to release some of some of my facial expressions and dancing and singing along that happens on the other side of the screen here. <laughs> yes. <because> <laughs> For anybody that doesn't know, um, we have a Spotify playlist um, that includes all of the artists that have ever been on the Breakthrough Show. And I continue to be so lucky that I can, you know, turn it on and I'm blasting my friend's music in the car. That means something to me. So what are you working on? Tell everybody what you're up to. Yeah, so I just recently, I want to say about two weeks ago, for the first time since I recorded my Christmas song, went back in the studio. So I recorded two new songs that I'm working on um, that are going to come out soon, hopefully in the next couple of weeks to months. I'm really excited about those. They're pretty good. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to top those then. And then I was like, wow, this one's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we so love some ghosted now. We do. <laughs> um, so you're you're in the studio recording new things, and we're excited to hear about that. You're of course, you know, if you can make time for us between Oprah and Ellen, you know, come back on and. <laughs> I will always make those. time for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you so much, my friend, and thank you for being here. And of course, um, tell everybody where they can hear your music. If, they, if, they're, if you've been living under a rock <laughs> and have not heard Kevin before, where can people listen to you, Kevin? It's everywhere. You can't get rid of me. It's on Spotify, <laughs> Apple, YouTube, even Amazon, all that good stuff. And if you can't find it, message me. My Instagram is kevinkiley123. I'll send it to you personally. <laughs> There we go. And you could, of course, always go to thebreakthroughshow.com. It's there too. Kevin, thank you so much for being here today, thank my friend. Thank you for having me. Of course, anytime. All right, you guys, it's been another fantastic show today. I want to thank my very special guest, Annie Henderson, and also Kevin Kiley. And I want to encourage you, you guys, whether we're talking about Pride Month or any other you know, things that come to your awareness about being more inclusive or honoring other people's differences, honor their differences. Don't use it as a means to separate each other and be an ally, which is more than just taking a month and saying, this is what I believe in, or I'm okay with this, with this person because of the way that they are. It's more than that. Take every day to learn more, have more conversations and ask, ask questions, ask what you can do to be a better ally, to, um, to take action and not just talk the talk, but walk the walk as well. Thank you guys for joining us wherever you are in the world. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas. And until next week, I encourage you to make every day a great day for a breakthrough. We'll see you next time. tuning in to another episode of The Breakthrough. Please visit our website at www.thebreakthrough.com.
Same time.